What's up, Global? It's Mr. Smith, and here we are on this glorious Friday on our wonderful campus. And today, the topic for the ATW is going to be on South Asia and how it was a party in the IRV. I'm going to be talking to you guys about geography to begin. And really, this is actually going to hone in on one specific region of the world, South Asia, that we're going to concentrate on. But the map that you're seeing right now is going to indicate how throughout this course, we're going to play a lot of human geography into our discussions and into our understanding of world history. In fact, this week, a little teaser for the team trivia that's going to take place on Tuesday, we're going to do a human geography, world geography team trivia that's going to be asking you to know these world regions. So here we are this weekend. I'm letting you all know that you are going to have to know the world regions that appear on the map right in front of you right now. And we'll be playing some trivia games to see if you can recognize which these regions are and then also countries that are a part of these regions. So be prepared for that this coming Tuesday. Boggle, boggle. Now, when you think of geography and you think of modern day countries, South Asia includes modern day countries like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. That's the region. Oh, and even Nepal. I forgot about Nepal. South Asia includes those modern day countries. As we study the region of South Asia throughout the year, the mistake I want you to avoid is not calling all of those countries India. There is more to South Asia than just India. Yes, India is the largest country in South Asia, and by population, it's the second largest country in the world. That South Asia is far beyond just India. Now, you heard me tease this at the beginning of the video. It's a party in the IRV, and I had a little fun with that because after all, who doesn't love Miley Cyrus? Especially Party in the USA, which, oh my gosh, that song is like 11 years old now. I'm really getting old. Maybe it's the gray hairs and the beard. But regardless, it's a party in the IRV refers to one of the most dominant geographical features of South Asia, and that's the Indus River Valley. The Indus River is one of the most important river valleys in all of the world. And so far, we've talked about two important river valleys in world history. Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, had the Tigris and the Euphrates, and then Egypt had the Nile River. River valleys, however, are really the cradle of the earliest, most complex societies. And so it's important to link the growth of complex societies directly to river valleys. When it comes to South Asia, it's the Indus River that's one of the most dominant features. And so Miley's song should hopefully always help you uh, remember the importance of the IRV as it goes into South Asia. Okay, so in the song, Molly begins talking about how she hops off the plane at LAX with a dream in my cardigan, welcome to the land of fame and excess, am I gonna fit in? So let's talk about the people of the Indus River Valley. And keep in mind, we're talking about civilizations that started roughly around the same time as Mesopotamia and Egypt. So we're going back to the 3000s BCE, give or take some years there. But as the Indus River Valley developed, it's social, so our S component of G-Sprite, we're really gonna talk about two major cities that developed in the Indus River Valley, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. These were two classical Indus River Valley cities. In fact, at their given time, the Indus River Valley cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro could have rivaled the complexity of the greatest Egyptian or Mesopotamian cities. You'll see photos of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, but these were complex cities that had sewage systems. They were home to hundreds and hundreds of people. They had streets. So there's a whole lot of complexity buried within the ancient ruins that have been discovered uh, by archaeologists and historians. And I use the Miley lyrics about, you know, welcome to the land of fame, because these two cities were famous in history for being some of the most complex human cities of their time. And so when she's like, am I gonna fit in? 
right? If you were coming into these cities in the Indus River Valley, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, you would have been certainly amazed at just the grandeur, the technology that was oozing throughout the city to build these great cities of the Indus River. The irrigation techniques that were in Mesopotamia also transferred and you certainly had your own versions of irrigation with the Indus River. And really, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa are great examples of how even so much as about four or 5,000 years ago, humans were building cities that oftentimes resemble very much like our own cities. And the complexity and the intricacy of these cities helped make the Indus River one of the first river valley civilizations on the entire planet to introduce modern day amenities, like I mentioned, sewage and having streets. Like that was a first in world history. And that certainly helps those cities stand out in terms of the development of the area. Unfortunately, historians know very little about what happened to those two great cities. And so despite the fact there's a great history mystery about what happened to these once upon a time great IRV cities, one thing we can for certain take to the bank is the fact that the IRV was home to at one point the world's greatest cities in Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Okay, so Miley is lamenting the fact that she's an outsider. And speaking of outsiders, that's something that's very important to understanding the social and political and also religious dynamics. So three G sprites are gonna come here in this next session. Tell me. One of the groups that's most instrumental in the formation of culture and political and religious development in South Asia were a group of foreigners who moved, who migrated into South Asia and conquered a great chunk of South Asia, especially the Indus River Valley, and these were the Aryans. The Aryans were groups of nomads who came into South Asia and they settled over thousands of years ago. The Aryans originated somewhere in Central Asia, more Europe in that region, the eastern parts of Europe. Something that is critical to understand about the Aryans is that when they eventually set up their culture, their civilization in the IRV, they instituted a rigid social hierarchy system that has endured for all time. And this is something that I want you to always take away from this little nugget of information about the IRV. The Aryans, as they moved into the Indus River Valley, instituted what is known as a caste system. No, not the type that you put on your wrist if you fracture your wrist playing sports or some kind of activity, but rather a caste system in which people are ranked. They are placed into categories, and those categories can be determined by the following. For the Aryans, a lot of their ranking had to do with skin color. The lighter your skin cone, tone, the higher ranked you were within the society. The Aryans put a strong emphasis on skin color. In fact, they were one of the first groups of people, that known groups of people, that ranked people based on skin color. Another factor that the Aryans ranked people, not just on skin color, but also family. Who you were born into, what family you were born into, that mattered a great deal within your, your social standing. And so, uh, having lighter skin and being born into a wealthier or prominent family was certainly a way for you to boost yourself within the caste system. And then of course jobs. Just like today, depending on the job you have, in some cases it determines your, your rank, your position within society. The Aryans divided people up into four categories. The highest ranking jobs were priests and scholars, so well-educated people or religious people had the highest ranking position. They were known as the Brahmin. The Kshatriya were the warrior or the government official. So people that worked for the government was the second class of citizens. The Vaishya, these were the land-owning farmers, merchants, craftsmen, artisans, etc. These are the people that uh, worked mostly like middle-class jobs. Then you have the, the Shutra, which either, these are the laborers, the, the lower class laborers, the manual laborers. And even below all of them, your fifth category were people known as the untouchables. And these were like the pariahs, the outsiders that you just wanted nothing to do with, the people with the lowest jobs. So there were five categories. And within these categories, what's most important, memorizing each of the categories, cool, if you can do it, great. But what I want you to really take away from this section is that being an outsider, the Aryans were able to eventually institute a culture that becomes pervasive, that sweeps throughout South Asia. And in South Asia, the, the caste system was there to stay. In fact, the caste system was, has only recently been diminished. And so 
like we struggle within America uh, about social injustice and we talk about how uh, the horrors and the traumas of slavery has left an indelible mark on this country, so too has the caste system in South Asia, except the caste system has been instituted much longer, thousands of years ago, uh, within the South Asian region of the world. So the caste system was a contribution of the Aryans that perhaps looking back, we can pinpoint to, to really being the cause of systemic racism in South Asia, especially because they based a lot of the caste system on skin color. But no matter what, the last thing, thing I'll say, the last thing I'll say about the caste system is the caste system existed all the way into the 1900s. And whatever category you were in, it was almost impossible to go up. You could go down perhaps, you could drop in a caste, but it was almost impossible to go up. And so that becomes something entrenched and something I want you to always take away about the, what the Aryans birthed into the world was this rigid caste system that was dominant in the lifestyle of many South Asians for thousands of years. Boom, shakalaka! So our final segment here, and from Miley, we got the lyrics here. Feel like I'm hopping on a flight back to my hometown tonight. Something stops me every time. The DJ plays my song and I feel all right. So music is a major theme I want to bring to your attention about life in the Indus River Valley civilizations and South Asia. Because music at the time, thousands of years ago, was not something to get a club going or bring to life a party or an entrance song to a, a sports team or a musical form of entertainment. Music was rather tied to religion. And you cannot escape the fact that religion in South Asia and religion in the IRV, two of the world's most prominent religions, and we're gonna go deeper into these much later in the year, but I wanna just sort of put it on your radar. Two prominent world religions started within the Indus River Valley, Hinduism and Buddhism. Hinduism came first, it's one of the world's oldest religions, and then Buddhism started later on as a response to Hinduism by people that wanted to break away and kind of challenge the system a little bit. What's important though about Hinduism and Buddhism is that South Asian peoples early on used one of their most important cultural or intellectual, this is gonna be a good G-Sprite point for intellectual, they used music to communicate and pass stories on down, especially religious texts. And one of the things I'm very excited about for Monday is that we're gonna play some of the world's oldest known songs in our class, we can listen and experience the sounds and tie this all back to the Indus River Valley because ultimately, the earliest religions known to man, many of them started in the Indus River Valley. They were polytheistic, but what I think you'll find most memorable is that to pass on the words long before written language and books, people used music and songs. And that's something I think we can all relate to. So we're gonna listen to some tunes from the IRV we incorporated Miley Cyrus into this weekend mix. Keep in mind, of course, the importance of staying on top of these videos, but we'll talk further about the Aryans, the caste system, the music of the IRV with their religions, and then, of course, we got more geography to come. So that's it for the uh, weekend here at Global. Take care, and as always, the past shapes the future. Have a great rest of your weekend.